Monmouth is the historic county town of Monmouthshire in Wales. It is situated where the River Mono meets the River Wye, within two miles of the border with England. The town was the site of a small Roman fort, Blestium, and became established after the Normans built a castle here after 1067. The castle later came into the possession of the House of Lancaster and was the birthplace of King Henry V in 1387. The Mono Bridge is the only remaining fortified river bridge in Great Britain with its gate tower standing on the bridge. The historical and architectural importance of the bridge and its rarity are reflected in its status as a scheduled monument and a Grade 1 listed building. The bridge crosses the River Mono, 1,600 feet above its confluence with the River Wye. Monmouth has been a fair trade town since 2005. A regular market takes place close to the Mono Bridge and occasionally in the traditional marketplace in Agincourt Square. I walked up Mono Street, Monmouth's main shopping street. The town has a variety of both national and independent shops and there are many pubs in the centre of the town. Monmouth also has a full range of banks and many independent cafes and restaurants. Agincourt Square was the venue of the town's market, both before and after the Shire Hall was built in 1724. During the 19th century, farmers drove their flocks of animals through the square on their way to the slaughterhouses in Priory Street. The square was used as the meeting venue for fox hunts for many years. It has also been used to host open-air public meetings. Today, a market is held under the arches of the Shire Hall on Fridays and Saturdays, with a farmer's market on the second Wednesday of each month, and occasional craft markets during the year. Monmouth Festival was held in the square from 1982 until 2008, when the venue was changed to the old cattle market at Blestium Street. Standing in front of Shire Hall is the Rolls Memorial and Statue, which was unveiled in October 1911 to commemorate the aviation pioneer Charles Rolls. Church Street, a cobbled pedestrianised street, contains craft shops, a bookshop, a traditional greengrocer, chemist, coffee shops and restaurants. Monmouth Regimental Museum is located on Castle Hill. The museum is in a wing of Great Castle House, a listed building on the Monmouth Heritage Trail. The focus of most of the museum's exhibits is the most senior regiment in the British Territorial Army, the Royal Monmouthshire Royal Engineers, and the museum maintains the records of the regiment. Once an important border castle and birthplace of Henry V, Monmouth Castle stood until the English Civil War when it was damaged and changed hands three times before being slighted to prevent it being fortified again. All that is left is the ruined Great Tower and Hall. These stand on the edge of a steep slope down to the River Mono, on the west side of what was the castle ward. This was roughly circular surrounded on the west and north by the river, and on the east and south by a wall and ditch. Halfway along Castle Hill Road was the entrance, consisting of a bridge and strong gatehouse. I continued my tour of Monmouth as I walked up Priory Street.
St Mary's Church has grown from a community of Benedictine monks who established a priory here in 1101. Since that time, there have been four churches on this site. Today, St Mary's is a parish and civic church for the town and community of Monmouth. Just been talking to a lovely old guy who was really helpful about Monmouth. I mean, I've always known Monmouth pretty well, particularly when I was growing up in Chepstow, but he just came across to me and sort of said, oh, you want to go and have a look at this and, you know, do this walk here. And oh, he was just a really lovely guy. Goes to the local church and he's just really enthusiastic about this, just coming to Monmouth. Well, recently coming to Monmouth, I've been staying in the Premier Inn. And I have to say, and even though I've said this before, Premier Inns are all the same once you get inside. This Premier Inn in Monmouth is absolutely fantastic. It's quite a new one. It's only been open for, well, not quite 18 months. So it's a newly built one. The restaurant and the hotel are all in the same building. And I think that's what makes it better because it gives it that extra sense of friendliness. I walked in on my arrival and I was greeted by a really friendly lady called Kirsty. And although she was extremely busy with other guests staying there, she always went out of her way to help me out and make recommendations for what I could have for my evening meal and asking about what I was doing whilst I was staying here. And the same with a lady called Helen and another lady called Rachel. They were all really lovely, very helpful. Rachel was nice and she also made lots of recommendations as what I could have for dinner. And Helen was nice. She, she was quite funny because I actually, on the first morning I was there, <laughs> I was sitting in the restaurant thinking, is she going to come and take my order for breakfast? And I didn't realise that you actually had to go up and help yourself from the shelf. <laughs> No one's fault, it's not Helen's fault, it was just a bit of misunderstanding. So um, anyway, once I knew that I had to help myself, it was fine, but uh, I always remind her of that when I see her now, it's quite funny. So, um, But yeah, I have to say that Monmouth Premier Inn is brilliant, so if I'm ever in this area, Monmouth Premier Inn is an absolute essential place to stay. From the town centre, I headed towards the main A40, using the subway to reach the bridge over the River Wye. Crossing over, I turned off right to follow a section of the Wye Valley Walk. The path ran beside the river, where I soon came to the Duke of Beaufort's Bridge. The Ross and Monmouth railway line opened in 1873, terminating at Monmouth Mayhill railway station. This bridge of almost 300 feet, opening in May 1874, was constructed to join Mayhill with Monmouth Troy station. It consists of three spans of steel lattice girders on paired steel tubular piers with squared rubble abutments. The main span is 46 metres long and the shorter spans are 18 metres each. It was built by Edward Finch of Chepstow. The line between the two Monmouth stations was closed in January 1964, but the Duke of Beaufort Bridge remains in use as a footpath. Just beyond here is the disused Monmouth Viaduct that was built in the 19th century to take the Wye Valley Line south to Chepstow. It was designed by Christopher Furbank and built by Kennards of Crumlin. It was about 50 feet above the water and lay on two 150 foot girders resting on the stone arches. Large crowds assembled to watch the bridge being put into place in 1861. Only the stone parts of the viaduct exist today. The central girder span was dismantled after the railway finally closed in 1964. The Wye Valley Walk continued by the river, so I enjoyed a gentle walk as I headed south.
that's Penol's old church all the way up there. It's a long time since I've been up there. 24 years, I think. And that was another walk I did with one of my Bristol friends. That brings back some memories. Before long, I found myself in a very familiar place I had visited not too long ago. Well, I've arrived back in Redbrook again. But I'm not going to be stopping here this time. Redbrook is actually where I leave the Wye Valley Walk, and then I'm going to take the lane that goes up through Upper Redbrook and follow another long-distance footpath back to Monmouth. Following the Newland Road for about a quarter of a mile, I branched off left at a National Trail sign. I was now walking along a stretch of Offa's Dyke Path. The rough tarmac lane soon degraded to a track, and my way progressed steadily up a long tongue of a hill. The views around me were outstanding, with the western edge of the Forest of Dean to my right. Just beyond Cockshoot Ash Barn, Offa's Dyke Path followed a grass path, where I slipped through a kissing gate to continue at the edge of a field. Skirting the edge of a wood, I went through one more kissing gate as I reached a wonderful hill overlooking Monmouth, known as the Kimmin. The summit of the hill, about 800 feet above sea level, is known for its neoclassical monuments, the Roundhouse and the Naval Temple. The site is owned by the National Trust. The Naval Temple was built by public subscription in 1800 to commemorate the second anniversary of Nelson's victory at the Battle of the Nile, as well as 15 other victorious Royal Navy Admirals of the age. The H-shaped temple was finished in 1801 and is topped with a figure of Britannia seated on a rock. Today, this unusual and unique Grade II listed building has been preserved for future generations and will continue to stand as a testament to Great Britain's past naval supremacy. The Roundhouse is a circular Georgian banqueting house. It was built in 1794 as a small private dining club for local gentry, and notable diners have included Lord Nelson and Sir and Lady Hamilton, who enjoyed breakfast here in 1802. Consisting of two storeys with just one room on each floor, 
The roundhouse included a kitchen downstairs and the banqueting apartment above. But one real advantage of coming up here to the Kimin is this. Next to the roundhouse, there was a viewpoint where I enjoyed fantastic views over Monmouth and far beyond into Wales. Well, how wonderful was the Kimmin? Absolutely wonderful. Well, that's me finished up here now. So all I've got to do is follow Offa's Dyke Path a little bit further and I'll be dropping back down into Monmouth. From the Kimmin, I continued along Offa's Dyke Path, my way dropping steeply through Bewley Wood. Eventually, Offa's Dyke Path came out onto the main road, which I followed as I slowly headed back into Monmouth. What an absolutely wonderful day it's been. A superb walk along the Wye Valley Walk to Redbrook, and then back to Monmouth along Offa's Night Path. That climb up to the Kimmin was just absolutely to die for, with the views over Monmouth, what more can I say? And the weather, I couldn't have asked for a better day. Well now I'm gonna have a rest for a while, and then I'm gonna go and find something to eat before I make my long journey home. <laughs>